This is our town. Welcome! What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 198 of Value Town. We're back from the holidays after a, a nice one week break. But I'm Chamian V. Gara's back this week. What's up, buddy? Uh, not much. Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah. Gara's back in town. <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year. And we've got a brand new guest today. Gia's joining us. If you don't know Gia, she's a caster. She casts all the. Uh, the tournaments overseas and and uh, all that good stuff. She won a tournament recently too, which we'll be talking about. With. So lots of awesome things happening for Gia. How, how are you doing, Gia? What's up? I'm doing really well. It's kind of a weird time for me since I am overseas, as you mentioned. <laughs> yeah. But happy to be here. Yeah, I guess overseas. We were overseas, I guess, for you. So yeah, all <laughs> relative. All of our relative. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but hope everybody's having a, a great 2019. Everybody was able to celebrate, you know, New Year's last night and have a good time with that. Uh, but uh, you know, now we're into the new year. So to, today we're going to be talking about all the um, events that have happened the last two weeks, or at least since the last show. Uh, but we'll also be reviewing 2018, just kind of talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, all that good stuff, and then maybe what we look forward to in 2019. Q&A, as always, at the end, so if you guys have any questions, you can either tweet them over at ValueTownGG, or you can just save them in Twitch chat, and then you can ask us a little bit later. Uh, we got some email ones already, so we'll, we'll definitely... E email Q&A always is, takes priority, so we'll, we'll read out some of those first. Uh, but I guess, why don't we start with like I always do, our week in Hearthstone. This is kind of like where we talk about just playing Hearthstone, any of the you know, cool things happening in terms of the game itself that, that maybe we've uh, discovered or experienced or anything like that. So uh, have you guys been able to play the game at all during the holidays? Like maybe a little bit of ladder or uh, or not? Anything, anything re related to it? Uh, I was playing a ton, actually. I played all nine really? classes, pretty much all the different archetypes. And wow. the most fun I had def was definitely with Mage. I played a lot of Elemental Mage and I realized it was super difficult to build. I ended up with three completely different elemental mage lists, like a little bit more aggressive or like a little bit more control. There's mm -hmm. so many cards you can exchange. And there's now, especially now when you are like entering the final stage of a standard cycle, you have like the most cards available and you just have so many different elementals right now. It's just, it's very cool. Like you can, you know, exchange so many different cards. And today I played Big Spell Mage, and I think Big Spell Mage is pretty strong right now. Like, you don't face all these Maligos Druids, Togwaggle <laughs> Druids. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like the nerf definitely helped Big Spell Mage as an archetype. So uh, this was definitely one of my favorite decks of 2018 review. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's good to see that it is playable. Yeah, but I, I also played like... Death Stars, Midrange Hunter. There's like three diff completely different top tier Hunter decks that are completely yeah. different. Secret yeah. Hunter, Midrange Hunter, and I'd Death Rattle Hunter. Or, or yeah, even more. But they're like, they, they don't even play the same cards. And I saw that people really like that as the best class right now. Uh, I thought more people would be like upset. Like Hunter is extremely popular right now, like more than 30%. Mm -hmm popularity but i saw like reddit posts that people are fine with that just because the hunter archetypes are all very different they play very different and you know very quickly when you play against them what they are you see if you play against secret hunter they play a secret you know it's secret hunter you play against yeah. mid Hunter, you see like let's say diamond you know it's mid range hunter and you see an egg you know it's definitely hunter so compared mm -hmm. to druid when they play wild growth you know nourish mm -hmm. Sometimes, even till the very last turn, you don't know if it was Mechatoon Druid or Togwaggle Druid. You know? as soon, <laughs> first, when you see like Togwaggle, you know, okay, now it's Togwaggle Druid. Yeah. So yeah. It's way less frustrating to play against that as like the best deck in the game. So I definitely had like a lot of fun playing also all sorts of different decks. Yeah, that's kind of how I am too when I play Hearthstone. You know, I, I think sometimes I, I uh, haven't felt or had the same sentiments with the community in terms of of when some deck is being oppressive and they want to get, you know, they want to nerf it or whatnot. For me, it's just like, as long as I know how to play against it, you know, and how to counter it, and it's very 
you know, known and figured out, that's actually okay. So like with Odd Paladin, for instance, right? Odd Paladin's still good. Everybody, you know, I, I, some people still have an issue with Odd Paladin still being good. But for me, it's like, it's not that big a deal because like, you know, there are specific, there are lots of, uh, there's a good number of decks that actually do, you know, well against Odd Paladin and, and it's uh, a very known, and you know, it's, it's a known thing. So I think with Hunter, you can kind of say that too, just with the different Hunters, even though they can be hard <laughs> like to, to still play against because they're just so good. Some of them are, are obviously really good in certain matchups, but, you know, once you know what it is, it's not... You know, I don't feel as bad losing to it when I uh, I know what I'm playing against. Like 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 against Druid, like you said. Like it's like, oh man, I didn't even know I was gonna lose to that combo at the very end. <laughs> you know, and that that can be pretty brutal. So um, uh, pretty interesting. You're playing Mage though. Like I actually haven't gotten a chance to play that much Mage recently. I was, I've been playing mostly Priest, which surprisingly Priest has like a good number of of decks right now as well. So it's it's been a pretty interesting time since the nerf. Yep. Um, you know what's a good mage right now? I've been playing Quest Mage. It's yeah, fun. I've seen some the elemental package in Quest Mage. I mean, I did bring it mostly as a meme for an yep. ex, uh, exhibition match, but it's a ton of fun just being able to actually use a Luna in Quest Mage to get things done quicker. And uh, I don't know. I really miss the whole Antonidas and the Four Apprentices, and it's actually <laughs> okay now. I actually played Baku Secret Mage, like the, the Agro Mage version from Rank 5 to Rank 4 this yeah. season. Mm -hmm. Really? It's actually oh so goodness. funny. Yeah, because it was like on HS Reaper, the highest win rate deck, and I was like, oh, that seems fishy to me. And <laughs> it's actually so funny. It's, it plays like the Automaton, and you, 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 you can just buff the hero power. It goes from 2 to 4, and then yep, you play the yep. Automaton. I won like three games just hero powering people for 8 damage. <laughs> It's well, like so it's just one tick of that and your Janalaya is active. That's pretty cool. I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's powerful too. <laughs> I mean, that's that's quite a bit of damage as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's really neat. Even Murloc mages are still out there. At least, at least maybe a couple weeks ago, Murloc mages were popping up quite a bit. Uh, I was actually seeing them a bit. I think somebody brought a Murloc mage. Is that Ali or something? somebody brought a Murloc mage? I think even oh, WC. tons of us brought oh, it as the WSOE. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because nerfs drop so quickly right, right. Right before our tournament that everyone's like, okay, big spell or Murloc, there's no other choice because people don't really have faith in the elemental mage because it just seemed like a worse version of big spell mage. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, it was uh, definitely the timing of that, which we, you know, we'll talk about in a second, was <laughs> was pretty, pretty pretty tough for you guys. Um, so just mostly me. Anything else? Gia, have you been playing anything? Um, you know, I, I know most of it you're playing what had to do with preparing for uh, the, the events and whatnot, but any, any other classes you've been playing? Right, right. I haven't been playing much ladder, but uh, my Hearthstone experience over the past few weeks was either hardcore tournament prep or meme tournament prep for <laughs> right. uh, exhibition matches. So aside mm. from Quest Mage, I really love Hakkar Druid. It's so fun. Oh, I mean, it's like, that's another Druid archetype that you won't know what it is until the very end because it plays right. a lot like Mecha Thuid, but you play the Gadgets and package in it. And uh, that uh -huh. combo is strong enough to go through timeout. So, yeah. like, fatigue them on their turn, and yeah, they're immune. Uh, but then when you end turn, and they go to their new turn, and they still have, like, what, 16 <laughs> bloods in their deck, doesn't matter if they timed out. Right. It's just so funny. <laughs> right, right. No, Hakar has definitely created some of the most funny moments, I think, since the expansion's come out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I'm still on the fence as to whether I think it's good or not for the game. But for the, <laughs> at the very least, it, it creates, you know, very entertaining moments, which... Uh, Actually, I, I saw some with comments well. today that like infinite value is important for the game, so decks like Control Warrior don't get out of control. Infinite, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Isn't that infinite. limit yeah. design space even more? Yeah, exactly. I think we we get into yeah. We've kind of we've been in that <laughs> position before. I, mean, I don't think it's been good for the game. So mm -hmm. um, I mean that's that's pretty much that's how you sum up pretty much the. Uh, latter half of 2017 or maybe yeah the second half of 2017 and, and it's creating like these infinite type of uh, value you know with with the dks and and everything so um hopefully we get away from that but uh yeah you know, you know i think we will probably will be in 2019 which will be nice um okay let's see anything i uh, see else in terms of the game um you know have you guys got a chance to do the uh 
uh, the the single player stuff much? Uh, have you guys finished any of the shrines and all that stuff? Or the, I was uh, the watching other streamers yeah. playing it. Yeah. I didn't play it myself. Well, I did the thing. It's pretty simple, actually. Not as difficult as the Boomsday Labs. Definitely, as far as the PvE content goes, Boomsday was my favorite. Although, oh, yeah? Rastafun's a bit interesting just because of the wild things you can do if you leave up the Loas. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I've only finished, like, four of them, I think. I mean, you're supposed to finish, like, 27 of them. <laughs> it's going to be a, take me a long time before I actually get all 27 of them. So, But uh, it's been a, a lot of fun, too, if you you know didn't want to play ladder. Um, but, yeah, so, and you know, Who overall, wants to play ladder I now? Know, kind of, it's like, why do you play <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it's so funny because I had this, like, conversation with people that uh, are, you know, fans of the show or, you know, longtime patrons and that sort of thing. And they're like, well, I mean, when you make statements like, well, why play ladder? Well, it's like, well, all of us have never tried to qualify for HCT, right? Like in, in the past. So we, we're just playing ladder still for the same reason. True. It's like, yeah, that's true. I, you know, so I, I think the ladder is still useful for a lot of people in terms of motivating them to play. But um, it's it could be a lot better. It could still be a lot better in terms of like even the non-hardcore, non-professional players, you know, laddering. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully they think about that a little bit as well. But uh, it's been weird, though. I think a lot of pro players just don't play ladder much. Like, Gar, you still play ladder, though, right? Just to... Yeah, for least... the same reason as before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like the Twitch for streaming, chat. basically. Yeah. For me, nothing has changed. To... That's true. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious. Like, I'm super curious about how they're going to do these qualifier tournaments. Like, I, I can't wait for the actual announcement that for, for how to qualify for HCT next year. If how many of those tournaments will be and how they will structure it and you know all the mm -hmm. qualifiers because yeah all of us are waiting with bated yeah, breath right because that might be you know that that might be like a thing that happens like every week you know you have to play a bunch of those and then you will be busy doing that and then you will use ladder to just practice decks for that and mm -hmm. yeah I mean I mean that's probably what it will be to be honest I mean right now I still think that most people play ladder just because it's the, the you know, truest form of playing right now you know like oh that's people. actually so much i want to talk about it's actually so much fun because they are now the coolest loki announcement they did is they said conquest is gone right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what is going to be the new tournament format it's yeah. something different right it can't be last year standing so i'm super <laughs> it, it could be last year format, standing but <laughs> let's just hope, hope it's yeah, something new standing. yeah can I mean, you imagine how debated that statement would be if they had this whole hype of no more conquest it's going to be new and innovative nothing you've ever seen before then they go it's just LHS. <laughs> that'd be awful oh my god that would be terrible <laughs> but but this oh, is something man. that bothered me always that like the main way to generate points was through ladder but mm -hmm. tournament formats are so different than ladder you know yeah. the, the decks you use to get high legend are so different than in a tournament just because you have like the bunning system and whatnot so i really like i, I really like all the announcements they did so far to be honest yeah i mean you know one of the biggest complaints i think w with having the ladder feed into the tournament system and, and not having like a tournament mode you know that that really function as that that way to feed into the the uh, you know HTT is that the formats are just so different. It's complete. It's like a you know it's like like a one game you know it's like a one game series type of thing on ladder, and uh, it's a whole best of three banning thing. You know like like in in terms of the events. So I think eliminating the ladder and and, and doing these th third party you know uh, online cup type of uh, model really matches that since they don't have a tournament mode. I think that that's probably why they they ended up moving towards you know that that sort of uh, consistency. Um, you know, I, I still think the tournament mode would would be amazing just all around for the the game and, and make it consistent in terms of of this this whole model. But um, but at least I they're mean, this, they're making this it cleaner, new mod right? They're making it cleaner at least from that standpoint. But like especially with this new announcement, right? Mm -hmm. It requires a tournament mode even more than before. Like if you want to go for that kind <laughs> unless of... it's done manually, which which is basically what all the online cup organizers are gonna do. So, uh, um, but you know, to your point, I, I hope there's a bunch of them because you know, like I I kind of like the fact that people can do this part time and still have a chance. You know, like have a chance to what, to qualify for. What I'm afraid of is that they say they also included that they will do a lot of invites. And I don't know what kind of invites they will do, if they will just invite famous, you know, Twitch streamers or if they will invite people that, you know, are successful at the game. 
because they haven't really described who they're going to invite. Yeah, I, again, I, there's a lot of details that need to be um, revealed, and hopefully it's soon. I, I would think it would be, you know, like... I mean, it has to be the new year, yeah, right? exactly. I, I would think maybe later this month or maybe early February, they would, they would announce more details. But, hopefully uh, around playoffs, because the broadcast mm -hmm. starts all throughout this month. Yeah, that's true. That, that, that would be an easy uh, outlet to, to tell everybody, too, you know, all at once, yeah. answer so any questions. What you what you mentioned about um, it being better for people with part-time jobs or mm -hmm. not full-time HS is actually pretty interesting because there was that big argument on Twitter. I think uh, Justine mentioned mm -hmm. that yep. she has a full-time job and she didn't like the complete scrapping of ladder, whereas a lot of people with full-time jobs were saying it's better for them. And I wonder mm -hmm. like, which um, group of people is actually more affected. Well, I mean, I, I have a hard time i mean unless we know exactly what these online cup schedules look like mm -hmm. i, I kind of have a hard time imagining it's actually better you know because when when you're uh, when you have a ladder system you can just play it anytime you want you know what mm -hmm. i mean like except for the last day or two you know when it's like a crazy grind and there's you know there's there's some meta to that um you know you could play late at night you could you know just fit in whenever you you know you can get in like a a, a game or two that sort of thing it's more flexible that way but with an online cup, I mean, you have to have I mean, like ten hours available or eight hours available, you know, to be able I, to complete I, I, that. Yeah, but I wanna I wanna bring up that recently mm -hmm. I saw like um, the guys from WePlay they yeah. they scheduled uh, open qualifiers very interesting, in a very interesting way. They made it for free regions, yeah. But you could join any region you want, so whatever fits your oh. um, schedule oh. the best. Okay. But then you're locked in, basically. If you choose to play in the American one, you can only yeah. play in the American one. Mm -hmm. But it's actually okay. then, it's so cool because then, you know, obviously everyone has to go through there, you know, play the whatever, how many hours it is. Yeah. To know how long it will go, like seven hours or whatever. But you can still choose whatever fits your, you, you know, some people mm -hmm. are working night shift. And yeah, whatnot. yeah that's true. I think this is what? very cool. Like it really comes down to how it's organized. I think, to be what, honest. What do you guys really think about an asynchronous tournament? You know, like asynchronous meaning the matches don't have to be all played at once. You know, like they can be played at different times. And as you get through the next round, you know, you and your opponent kind of find each other whenever both of you guys have time, type of thing. And you know, like these tournaments don't have to go sequentially. Like they, they can just there could be like who knows, like thirty tournaments going on at once that they're, you know, like like happening at the same time you know they, they just have to yes. finish by a certain time though so the badass women of hearthstone tournament that's been mm -hmm. ongoing for a couple of months now is mm -hmm. following that kind of asynchronous yeah. format and i think cool. it works for them the only big problem i see with that is that uh you cannot predict how things will change when nerfs drop because it might not be consistent for this set of yeah Oh, she getting she going robot. You went robot on us for a second. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just saying it's difficult when patches drop because some people will play in the old update and yeah. others will play in the new update, and it's hard to keep the rules mm, consistent. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a challenge that way. But it, it's a new approach, though. I, I think that that might be you know like some form of that. You know, maybe you still have a given time period. You have to finish everything. But the fact that you just don't have to sit there for eight hours, you know, or, or however many, yeah. some, some of these tournaments are like 12 hours long. It can be pretty crazy. Uh, it might, might just be a little bit more conducive for everybody's schedule. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see who, who you know, in the end, if it does benefit, like somebody like Justine, if she can still participate in this. Because it would suck if, if, you know, people like her aren't able to do it anymore. Because they, mm -hmm. you know, they, they were cool storylines as well. Uh, I mean, we even had some of them would go really far, you know, like a few, a few of the the players, you know, uh, did really, really well. So, um, okay, well, so why don't we move on? We got we got still a bunch of events to talk about here, so let's get going, or else we'll be here for a while. So WSOE, Gia, congrats on winning a WSOE. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, we we talked about it on the last show. We were, I mean, I was super excited about you know getting a chance to play or just getting a chance for you guys, you know, you guys to play and have a female uh, tournament. And um, I didn't actually really realize what the format was at the time. I didn't even know it was going to be that different. You know, I was just like really excited that that you know ESP and and W you know would would I you know, do an event that was uh, a female only and and what that meant for the community. But uh, the fact that there was a nine class 
draft format as well was like super cool, you know, and, and you know, me and Gia were talking about it earlier. You know, I think the um, the viewership for the the event was uh, one of the highest of the entire year. Outside of like HCT events, it might have been the most viewed event out of the entire year. Right? You know, in terms of max concurrency and just average concurrency. I agree. Uh, yeah, which it's true. And yeah. in terms of the format, Zole actually mentioned it's the hardest format that Hearthstone has ever seen mm -hmm. on paper. Just mm -hmm. having to prep all nine classes and then figure out a band strategy, which can't be consistent because mm -hmm. everybody has some different lineup and you have to adapt to that. Yeah. And then the fact that the nerfs dropped uh, around 12 <laughs> hours before our deck submission <laughs> is just all these layers of stress coming together for us. Um, but as far as all of that was um, kind of a mess, I think ESP and WSOE did a really good job of treating us well. And that really contributed not just to the player experience, but also to the viewership, I think. Yeah, and the production level, man, that was, mm -hmm. like, great. I mean, they, you know, the, the, it's one thing to do an event like that, but it's another thing to actually do it right. You know, actually mm -hmm. have the highest level of production available. I mean, the studio, the, you know, just, just the casters, just everything, you know, even, like, you know, for you guys, everything, you know, you're just how, how they were taking care of you guys. And I think that was one of the, the biggest things, too. You know, there wasn't many things to knock it except for the fact that, you know, you guys did have to resubmit 12 hours before, and it wasn't even their fault. You know, that was, that was nothing mm -hmm. that they could have done. So, um, you know, I, I think that, that was what was, like, really amazing. It was, like, all these stars kind of lining up, you know. And, and I think a combination of, of uh, a lot of the participants were people that the community knows, too. You know, like yourself oh, yeah, and sure. Allie and Salissa and... And Cora, and you know, it's like, and I, I think that was a huge part to, uh, of even from a uh, standpoint of of showing like what events do well. You know, events. I think Honestly, a, com a combination of of having people recognizable mixed with like a competitive, uh, you know, a top tier competitive element to it is is like a great formula. Something that is also probably underrated is the fact that besides World Championship, mm -hmm. I think this was the most hyped tournament. Like, because you rarely see these players compete. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. like, to see who is actually, you know, who's going to win that tournament. I think that was pretty hype to watch. Like, compared to other tournaments like HCT Tour Stops, you know. They're, like, happening every weekend. And they were way less hype in comparison. I think it's just true. everything went together in that tournament. You know, good production like famous people as well and you know it's it was very hype to watch like okay like even for me it was like for a long time i had the feeling like usually i have like recently in the past two years i had that feeling like at world championships who's going to be the next world championship and that was one of those tournaments where you very similar to like maybe seed story cup very kind of that where yeah. you're like okay who's gonna win this like who's gonna get out of groups it was very hype to follow yeah, they did everything right. Like, they even had the tickers going at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yeah. When you weren't right. watching your right. favorite, if they weren't on stream, you could know how they're doing. And WSOE really was just a curveball in terms of announcement because even the players who were invited, it was a little bit short notice, or at least mm -hmm. shorter notice than you'd think for something of that scale, of the prize pool that big. And yet they executed it really, really well. And that... Uh, that company, ESP Gaming, they're having WSOEs every week. Like they had the week right after a 100K Fortnite tournament yeah. and then they're having a Rocket League one and it's just going to keep going and going. And I really think that uh, HCT needs to take some notes if they want to know. <laughs> or let them the do it. <laughs> just, just let ESP, yeah, ESP and WSOE just do it. I don't know if right. I'm allowed to say that as a caster. Yeah, but yeah right, right. Yeah. No one gets you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the LED, I mean, even just the studio, right? I mean, the studio in some ways felt better than the Blizzard Arena. I mean, we had those LEDs all across the walls and in front of the, front of the you know, the, the sitting area, as well as on the floor, too. You know, like, it, I think just mm -hmm. overall, it was, it was crazy. And then you had the walkway for you guys as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like everything about that was, was um, in some ways better. Not everything, but there were definitely mm -hmm. elements of it that was just better, you know, and... I mean the lot we were in is actually used for filming movie scenes. Like one of the oh, guys who was really? handling us told us that they filmed some scenes of Star Wars elsewhere on that lot. And then that the production crew that was handling us, they come, they come from a traditional sports background and yeah. they have won Emmys before. And I was just mind blown that <laughs> um, you know, somebody finally took 
um, the that idea and put it into esports and yeah. to be part of that. And then I was also asking, like, what was the reasoning for coming up with an all women's event? Because they could have easily done something like that with the top level in general Hearthstone players because they got top level casters, top level production. Yeah. And they just said that, you know, we haven't seen anything like this in Hearthstone. I guess the closest thing is WESG mm -hmm. and the publicity for that was not very good um, outside of the individual region. So I really think it was great. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the the narrative has changed, you know, just in terms of, of having an, an all-female tournament, you know, like... Um, you know, I think they were smart and not, I mean, they didn't really advertise it as an all female tournament, which I think right. was really smart on, on their end, but you know, in reality it was, but, um, but you know, like I think the, the community's thoughts on just an all female tournaments is completely different now than it used to be. I think mm -hmm. everybody is much more, um, like accepting of that, you know, like thinking that it's a good idea and wanting to see that versus, you know, when WESG did it, you know, that it was, it was controversy all around it, right? Like, right. why is this like an exclusive tournament, you know, for females and, and all this stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think that's a good point to like discuss, like it, it has it changed, like, and if it has changed, like, why is it changed? You know, like there's the Hearthstone being equal, you know, being a game that should be equally, um, equal from a standpoint of, of, you know, what sex you are, you know, in terms of male and female versus say like, you know, football, you know, or tennis or something yeah, where it's just stronger and faster, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it really, there really doesn't that need to be, you know, we haven't seen that, you know, ACT is obviously, you know, any sex as well. So why are these like female tournaments like WSOE just like better received now? So actually when WESG first came out with their, um, gender separated mm -hmm. tournaments like two years ago um i was really furious about that but mainly because that they had a delineation with the prize pool like the male oh, prize pool was like right. five ten times bigger than the all women's prize pool right mm -hmm. and then um initially the rules said that uh men and women must compete separately and then they later revised it to say that the oh the big prize pool tournament was open to people in general and then there was a women's tournament mm -hmm that only women could be part of. And then this year, they changed it so that male and female are just completely separate, but they have the same prize pool. Mm. So um, there's so much to pick apart here. Like the whole idea of having an all women's tournament could seem like it's really patronizing mm -hmm. at first glance, um, but you really have to look at the intentions of the tournament organizer for having these separate tournaments, right? I think from WESG's perspective, they wanted to pattern it after the Olympics where even uh, non-physical sports have gender separation and chess and all that. And that's another argument to be had, but um, I, I guess I can just say I get that argument because they're trying to follow a pattern. When it comes to invitationals though, um, WSOE, as you mentioned, they didn't put the word women or female on any of their advertisement at all. The most they had hinting to it was that the MMA looking poster was just two women. Mm -hmm. And I think that the intention there is more to promote women in the scene rather than patronize, right? They're trying to show that there is this group of women in Hearthstone that can play at the top level. And uh, we might not necessarily uh, get to qualify for all the tournaments that um, the people in general do. And it can be hard as a woman entering tournaments in general because uh, there's a certain level of toxicity, not just in the community, but like on Twitch chat. If you've ever watched a dream hack where a woman was playing, it's just insane how, uh, how bad the bullying can get really. So being yeah. invited to a tournament where uh, you can feel that it's a community that is supportive and at least you're all in it together, I think is a really good thing. Yeah, and I'm right there with you, and I, and it's great to see too. You know, like I I was watching a lot of it, and Twitch chat. Granted that the WSU mods were doing an awesome job, but for the most part, Twitch chat was like amazing. Like there was none of that happening in in that tournament, which was great. And I think what a lot of people really appreciated as well was just seeing you guys actually in in a top level competitive environment. You know, like yeah. seeing some of the streamers, seeing some you know like casters like yourself and. You, know, you and Cora, I mean, particularly, and not only getting a chance to see how good of a Hearthstone player you are, just because like you know Cora's been on here too, and we're just like, 
Corey's such a great right. player too, and you guys just don't know that, you know. And same with you know G y yourself as well, um, you know. Besides just being able to allow you guys to prove that, it was just really cool to see how you, you guys like like in that space where you're having to figure out, okay, like you know, strategically, you know, what to do, and you guys taking it seriously too. I think all of that was like really, really great, you know, for everybody to see and, and um, you know, obviously helped you guys, you know, and, 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 you know, what you guys do, but also I think it just encourages more females, you know, to get involved in, in, mm -hmm. in uh, the competitive and, and just even the general Hearthstone scene. I don't know any other game that where we, where you could really pull this off. Like, is there any other game where we have that many female players uh, or, or not even players or, or influencers that we could pull a WSOE? You know, to that level where there's like like that many very known females. Maybe um, in Counter Strike, but I'm yeah, not sure. Counter Strike like a... maybe the only other one. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I can't think of another game, and that's that's kind of sad. You know, like I, I it, it'd be mm -hmm. great to be able to do this with with other games, but there's just not as there's not enough female um, influencers and players, and, and you know, and that and that element of it. So. Um, you know, as from the standpoint of Hearthstone community, you know, we should applaud ourselves for at least that, you know, like we at least, we're not quite there, obviously, but at least, you know, <laughs> I feel like we were leading the way, you know, we ha Hearthstone is a game that is the, probably the most friendly in terms of streaming too. So there's a lot of female streamers in terms of, of Hearthstone. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I definitely applaud ESP and, and uh, WSOE for doing it. And like you said, they're, they're continuing to do it. And I think they're already talking about the next Hearthstone one being like in Vegas or something like that, right? There are some rumors yeah. about that, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's cool. There, I've also heard some people saying it's going to be a co-ed one. They might take yeah. our top eight and then invite eight guys. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be really cool. I mean, the whole uh, concept of having a women's tournament, again, if you look at it, just at first glance, it seems patronizing, right? For Hearthstone, it's like, people might argue, why do women need um, a special event just for them when they can easily compete at other ones? And, you know, growing up, I was, I thought that I myself was very comfortable playing against guys, against girls or whatever, because I grew up in an environment where uh, my brother would let me play video games against mm -hmm. his friends and yeah. I'd get just as competitive as them. Um, but even then, having this uh, tournament experience for me was such a confidence booster because it kind of goes unsaid, I suppose, that um, to be honest, the general level of the WSOE tournament is not as high as it yeah. would be at HET. If you just look at our aggregate HET points, but then you, you have to ask yourself, why is it that um, maybe the top women players are not performing as much? Are we not inspired? Do we not have the confidence? Do we not feel like it's actually possible? But going into that tournament, it felt as difficult as, you know, hearing from guys and people who helped us prep that this was as difficult as any other tournament. Um, makes you feel like if you can achieve this at the level that people expect, then, then you're more able to go um, and compete at the general level as well. And right. I think it was really, really helpful. Yeah, it's, it's about just getting momentum, you know, like mm -hmm. trying to build some momentum, you know, in terms of getting more females into the space. And and I think that having these type of events is there's nothing wrong with having these events, you know. And I think the, mm -hmm. what was awesome is that that, that the whole community kind of came out and and was promoting it. You know, like we, we mm -hmm. all came out and watched it and we're tweeting about it and, you know, like like and. and you know, ESP and WSOE never told us to go do that. You know, like we, we were right. doing that just because we felt like it was good for the community. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that that was really cool to see, you know, just everybody kind of come out for that. Um, but okay, so, you know, WSOE SOE is like literally right after the last show we did. But uh, this past weekend was All Stars, which was, you know, oh, yeah. uh, uh, an event that you casted, Gia. And, and this was a, 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 obviously a pretty fun, like a great, great event where we're supposed to have like the best players there, at least uh, a good number of the best players <laughs> kind of competing against each other in the different, you know, regions and whatnot. And, um, uh, is, is in Taiwan, uh, and, and you know, congratulations. To the uh, spoiler here. Make sure you guys uh, don't want to listen. I'm gonna give you five seconds here, <laughs> not to listen if you don't want to watch. If you haven't watched the vod yet, um, but congratulations <laughs> to uh, you know Vlad Trail for for winning over Tom. You know, like two great Taiwanese players playing each other. Two of the best, I would say, uh, playing each other. And, um, you know, this, this event was like pretty much the entire week and they had an exhibition actually to start things off, 
which <laughs> Gia ended up playing in, which uh, had some funny moments, especially the last match against Fish, which oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if you can talk about that, but just the sequence of events at the end where Fish you know miscalculated exactly lethal for you but then mm -hmm. the the uh, uh hakar ended up having the uh the the corrupted uh it's a corrupted blood is that what's called i forget mm -hmm. the corrupted yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Corrupted, corrupted blood, blood. in your hand that ended up killing you <laughs> like afterwards i think was the funniest sequence of events like ever so i agree yeah. i was laughing my ass off as well on the stage <laughs> yeah, and that. then after I checked uh, the community response to that, I looked up Reddit, and then people were all like salty for me. They're like, oh, Hearthstone always rewards the bad player. I'm like, guys, it was an exhibition match. That's why I brought Hakar Druid in the first place. Like, <laughs> people were not aware that it was not meant to be like a competitive event, just something to be entertaining. And I hope people are aware that it's just that, that sequence of, of events and me not winning, I think, because like as the casters were saying, like uh, the three other competitors, Baby, Fish, and Ginny, they're mm -hmm. mainly, not mainly Hearthstone streamers, and they don't really get that competitive in it. And then there was me coming off of a tournament win. It would seem yeah. like such a bully thing to do if I just, you know, <laughs> won the whole thing. So I think that th this outcome was actually the best in terms of entertainment. I'm so happy it was part of it. Yeah, and I mean, entertainment is... I mean, particularly exhibition, right? Entertainment is like all that matters, you know, in terms of an ex exhibition. But, you know, I think one element that we have been missing is just the is entertainment. You know, I, I think that it hasn't been taken into account enough, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the competitive element of it is just like the only thing that matters, you know, and, and I think we've seen that in terms of viewership. Viewership has been low because of, of that, that type of approach. So, you know, mistakes they're going to happen in hearthstone you know and it's it's fine if it's like a mistake that ends up creating a, a an entertaining moment at least in my opinion so i don't know i thought that was like one of the highlights of the entire weekend <laughs> and it, you know it yeah. happened you know in exhibition i don't know if you saw it gar or not but froden and tj literally could not stop laughing for like five yeah. like they, they couldn't even talk for like a good two minutes after that because they were laughing <laughs> like it's, it was so crazy yeah. let, me, let me link that clip in yeah. chat if people aren't aware because that was yeah. so fun and also if yeah. you guys want more of that kind of exhibition content like before the finals we actually had to fill some time because yep. we finished at around 5 30 p.m mm -hmm. but they wanted to broadcast the finals at 8 p.m on tv so we actually had to follow that strict schedule and so we had filler show matches between Hunter Ace and Pimping Ho. Hunter Ace was playing some sick memes. Then we had Frodan versus TJ, and they really, really went all the way in terms of not just, surprised. Yeah, <laughs> both both in their entrance and in the decks they played. And I don't want to spoil that, but you guys can look up the vods for Taiwan All Star Invitational. Yeah, you can find that on the the uh, Play Hearthstone Twitch channel. Yeah, the vods are all there. So. Um, but anyways, getting back to the actual tournament, you know, with all these like amazing players, Blood Trail, I mean, this guy went through the crazy, you know, gauntlet of, of bosses, Gara. I mean, like you, you were just seeing the list of players he beat, which include Hunter Ace and Muzzy and Tom and Surrender. So like, imagine going through that, Gara. Like, that, that's not a crazy lineup to have to be able to beat to win a tournament. Yeah, one of the most difficult top 16 um, brackets in the history of Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. Some of the top, top, top best players from all regions. <laughs> yeah, and Bletchrell, I mean, he is arguably the most underrated player, I think, in, in in competitive Hearthstone right now. Like, the players all know about him because he obviously did well, you know, at the last season. But, um, you know, I, I think that he is up there. He might be, like, top five right now, I think, in the world. Yeah. Might, may, maybe even higher. Lying. So I don't know. What, what are your thoughts, yeah, on Blood Trail? Just looking at the numbers, his run in the playoffs is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Like he top four in two playoffs That's in a row crazy. because he played at both the fall uh, championship and mm -hmm. the spring championship, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't quite make it in the first one, but he made it to Worlds in the second one. And then to be able to go to this high stakes tournament where all the players got free Google pixels because Google play was a sponsor by them. I'm really <laughs> jealous by the way. And, and he beat Hunter Ace, he beat Muzzy, he beat Surrender and then Tom, like a lot of people think that blood trail was not a great player because the first time they saw him um, this year, maybe his play was a bit shaky, but you can't deny that the guy has improved a lot. And, mm -hmm. 
you know, with that kind of stats to back it up, you just can't deny that he's really great. Yeah, he's going to be definitely one of the contenders at a world championship, or world champs, and it's going to be a. Uh... Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be the similar type of gauntlet there, you know. <laughs> like it'd be it's gonna be amazing. This World Championships is gonna be sick. It's gonna be so stacked, it, so it, stacked. insane, mm -hmm. it, ho totally mm -hmm. insane. But you know, one thing I you just said here that I had, you know I wanted to pick up on is wait, you didn't get a pixel? Like so, the casters don't get pixels too? Like no, no. Oh man. Okay, <laughs> I have a story. So okay. I get to the hotel, enter my room, and then there's this Blizzard bag. Yeah, like what you would bag. get when you buy merch at a Blizzard store. Yeah. And then I open it and then there's this jacket from Under Armour. It's like, oh, this is so cool. This is so sick. We get freebies. And then um, I, I hear later that uh, Hunters and Sequinox are going out to dinner. So I join them for some ramen. And then they're talking about, um, I, I ask them, hey, did you get the, the jacket as well? Yeah, 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 I got it as well. And did you get a phone? And then I just I double <laughs> A what? A what? <laughs> and they're like, we got phones, Google Pixel 3XL, because they're sponsoring our event. And so I was just like, oh my oh, god! Man. You think they're giving the casters the one too, right? Like, I don't know. We even played all of. I us know. Oh yeah, it's true. Sure. You guys happened. even played. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, maybe that was just a miss site. But uh, no, that's cool. I mean, at least you got something, you know, right? That's cool that they all got it. You know, the, the the tournaments over in Taiwan and China, man, they, they definitely know how to take care of the players. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. They do a great job there. Um, so, yeah, anyways, congratulations to Blood Trail and the whole general concept of the All-Stars. Really cool. You know, I, I hope they continue doing this. Um, you know, it's it's the second year I think they've done it. Is it is it second or third year? Third year. Third year. Third yeah. year they've done it. Yeah. So keep I hope they keep continue, you know, to do it, keep doing this. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't even know if. Uh, uh, you know, we may have more of these, who knows, like more than just once a year. Yeah, I just want to add that the Taiwanese location for, mm -hmm. for Hearthstone is just such, it, it's the nuts to hold mm -hmm. a Hearthstone tournament, basically, because when Tom won the World Championship, he got congratulated by their president. Yes. And to kick yeah. off our event, the mayor of Taipei was there. And then we ended right before, the day before New Year's Eve, right? And then on New Year's Eve, they had like some show match between Tom and a local celebrity also sponsored by the Taiwanese government because wow. I think that over there they they officially recognize esports as on the level of traditional sports and I think it's just such a great decision to have the worlds in Taiwan mm -hmm. because there's so much local support for Hearthstone in that, that place. Yeah, that's so awesome, man. Just I, I can't even imagine having that <laughs> that level of support here. <laughs> Maybe one day, one day we'll get there where Hearthstone will be <laughs> treated like that. But, uh, but yeah, it's going to be, I, I can't wait to see the crowds, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, Amsterdam was cool and all, but I, I don't think we had a that, that big of crowds actually come in just because it, it, you know, it's kind of a, uh, an interesting place to have it. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, we, we did have a good number of people, but I, I can imagine Taiwan and I, I'm, I'm curious to see what the venue is. Like, do we know the venue for world championships yet? Like, yeah, it, it's, I think it, it's the same place. It's the same place. Okay. Yeah, it's which huge. was a, a yeah. basketball stadium. Yeah, actually. it's huge for sure. And um, I, I, I kind of hope that they have, you know, they have the, the, you know, the pick, whatever you call them, like the, the tavern type of tables there. Oh, yeah. But I kind of wish, hope they have just like standard type of sitting, you know, seating too, just to see how how many people can fit in there and how how big of a crowd can the Hearthstone actually generate? Because if we could fill, I mean, if can you imagine like. 10,000 people show up to watch Hearthstone. That'd be Man, like I don't know if disgusting. we can get there, but the, <laughs> like, if, 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 if we could get there anywhere, it would be in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I want to see what the, the peak of the, it, it is, you know, mm -hmm. and, and see what that looks like, because that, that'd be amazing if we could get some yeah. somewhere in that For range. Sure. Um, okay, so last event to talk about was the uh, Specialist Showdown, Esports Arena, which I know, Gar, mm -hmm. you, you followed this one for sure. Uh, I, I checked it out too. It was uh, something that was organized by, um, I think it was Esports Arena and Tempo Storm, I believe, or was it just Tempo Storm? I, I can't remember what the, the two organizers are, but Tempo Storm definitely was a big part. And I know Saiyan, just Saiyan, was a, a big part of organizing this. Uh, but the concept, if you guys missed it, was um, it, it was every player would have a class that they, in, uh, that they would play, and then they would have their 30 card decks like normal, but then they would have a 10 card sideboard. So that was the format, you know, they, you would play like a best of three, um, in, in, you know, with, with that type of, uh, in between games, you could switch out from your sideboard. Um, there were nine people that they were marketing as like the specialists in their class, you know, like a lot of people that know in the community, 
but then there were there were more players too that but they they all had you know a single class that they were specializing in um Gar, I know you you were like wanting to play it. You know, you were you were chopping at the bit to play in this thing, but they were you no. able to get a chance to watch it at all and and see some of how how some of these matches played out? Uh, I saw some games, but yeah, it's 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 a little bit unfair because some classes are right now definitely stronger yeah. than other classes, and whoever had to play Druid feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was orange, right? Yeah, yeah. Now it's, yeah, the three specialists after the nerves. That's definitely a Fields Batman. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Devstar was so happy, dude. Devstar dude. was watching my stream yeah. before the tournament, and he was like smiling. Like, yeah. He was like, "Feels good to be Hunter specialist right now." <laughs> no, but it's come like on, you knew. dude. But Deathstar, man, I was like having like memories, good, good memories of way back when when I I. Uh, won what uh, when that lake team liquid uh tournament with the buzzer combo you know like when I introduced the oh, buzzer yeah. combo. i still get credit for introducing that to the community which is funny oh but, gee yeah, yeah the unleashed combo but he was basically doing the modern version of that in this tournament like every single time he played and i was like yeah dude he that he deserves to win being able to pull this off but uh but yeah death star you know congratulations to death star for winning um, yeah. But you know that combination of hyena and spring Paul and and um, you know obviously the bu buzzer and leash kind of combos. But I mean, just seeing the consistency of it, he drew really well too. But but seeing how well, it played out a lot too, it was just like wow, this is actually pretty good. You know, I don't know if it's purely memes. You know, also compared to the Def uh, Rattle Hunter, I think it's way higher skill cap as well yeah, because you yeah. really have to save your resources and you get much more punished for mulligan and and whatnot yeah. so like mm -hmm. he really showed that he's also like one of if not the top hunter player yeah yeah and but, yeah. it's also the fact that death rattle hunter has been playable for what three metas now three expansions or more mm -hmm. and uh this deck is just kind of coming out of the woodwork in the taiwan all-star invitational a couple of people brought it but we weren't so sure as to the power level but you know, Death Star really showed that there's so many different ways you can build it to tech it uh, to be best on ladder and against mm -hmm. certain matchups. And I think it's really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, even seeing him dire frenzy the spring paws and things like that, I was like, mm -hmm. wow. I mean, he was doing it like, every single time. I was like, wow, uh -huh. that's actually really cool. I didn't really think about, you know, doing that or just, you know, how, how spring paw could be leveraged that way. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was like, a, a little bit eye opening in terms of how Hunter could be played, you know, a little bit different way. And Death Star is another guy I think is pretty underrated in the community. Like a lot of people just don't know him, you know, even though he does stream some and, and a lot of the you know top players do know him. But, uh, you know, most people are probably in the community still don't know who Death Star is. So it was like really cool to get to see him showcase. There's you know, just his... so many good players now. Mm -hmm. I feel there like is. It's true. Yeah, for sure. It's like 50 plus good players. And what, what is also wait that, that number is a lot lower than I thought it was. Did Carl, no, like, fifty is not a lot, like, dude. Like, <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, like when you say like uh, top five, I, I would never say top five, top ten. Now, like there's right. just too many good players. Like I couldn't name top ten. It's just too many. Like yeah. I need to go top twenty, I guess. Like top twenty best players. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, yeah. what was also like interesting is not just Devstar winning. It's probably like. Who did well in the tournament mm -hmm. overall, yep. which was kind of like a little bit unexpected. For example, Strife Crow did extremely well. He went yeah, like Paladin, six dude. I mean, Paladin come on. Jeez. I uh, let, let the man speak, okay? Like, <laughs> okay. I was about to say that he got carried by Paladin being like <laughs> okay. one of the best classes, yeah. if not the second best, probably the second best class in the game just uh -huh. because of OTK Paladin. You know, he's mm -hmm. in my practice group and he was like lolling in the chat. How <laughs> oh, feels good to play Paladin, <laughs> yeah. especially this tournament. <laughs> But yeah, the player that performed overall and showed like showed up and showed that he's like a specialist of the class is probably Ike. Yeah. Because he did extremely okay. well with Shaman. And Shaman is also after the nerfs not that insane. Like it is good you have even Shaman, but compared to Hunter and Paladin, maybe not that great. He he did some some he got some nice wins for sure. Yeah. He he chose even Shaman, so it was it was very limited as to what you could add on his yeah. sideboard. Right. So he threw a Baku in it at the very end. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. His 10th card was a Baku, which was a complete meme. <laughs> pretty, but it was yeah. pretty funny, though. But Ike, Ike has his own special build of even Shaman that he yep. stands mm -hmm. by. 
And uh, I guess I've been converted into a believer because he was asking me before I submitted for WSOE, why doesn't anyone use my shaman? <laughs> well, now he got a chance to prove it. So. Yeah, but he I mean, also- his shaman statistically has been the best one. Like his most, you know, the most recent one that he that he plays. Uh, I mean, he's gone through ver- different versions of even shaman. Yeah, I, will, I want to say he's is- very similar to Devstar, where he in- innovated his Tempo Kalisev shaman. Yeah. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's very similar to like Devstar innovating the mid range Devstar hunter. Yeah. So he's definitely a specialist, and he he. I, I didn't think shaman would do that well in a tournament, to be honest. Like compared to all the other classes, but yeah. But it just shows you, you know, like if you put in. 500 to 1,000 games in a certain class, I mean, you are going to play better than everybody else, you know, in that class. And and I think that what was really cool about the event is really seeing these experts go against each other and, you know, uh, having just these nuances be on display, I think is is the the most entertaining part of the, the tournament. You know, seeing these people mm-hmm. pull out plays that we don't get a chance to see, you know, unless we're, we're watching their stream all the time. So, um, you know, Phil, Another Phil's very... always been like with that with Warrior and, you know, like we, it's, it's so cool to be able to like point at certain people that we know are, are specialists, you know, that, that's a really cool element to the community. Another important thing to point out is like, because this is the first tournament with a sideboard, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like the main games, mind games are crazy actually. <laughs> people, oh, true, yeah. <laughs> people like debated each other. People like expected people to sideboard and then they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were playing around sideboard cards, but they never sideboarded. And, and, and dude, I don't know. Like, did you end up liking it or not? I don't know if that is a good thing for Hearthstone. I liked it as a one-off. You know, like I think I thought I think there are interesting elements to it, but I don't. Maybe think... Maybe that would be the crazy Blizzard announcement for the. No, I, I don't yeah. think it's a good HCT tournament, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's interesting though. You could still innovate on the sideboard format so that like. You do the sideboarding and actual deck building blind, but once yeah. you get into the game, maybe you can have the list available at that point. Yeah. So there's mind games before you actually get into the game as to which tech you want to tech in to beat their tech. But right. I, Who do you think which class benefited the most and which one benefited the least ooh, from sideboarding? That's a good question. Um, even Shaman mm-hmm. was like the worst? I need to go look at well, it even, again. Even it's just limiting in itself. So, yeah. like, if you do even like or odd, I mean, there's not that many you can choose from. <laughs> Especially even like... Shaman. There's, like, so limited number of cards that you would choose. I mean, he was putting, like, Wind Fury in his deck and, just, and crap <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, he was desperate. Uh, I would say, hmm, that's a good question. I think Hunter is pretty, I mean, obviously Hunter is pretty darn good. Uh... Rogue, I feel like Rogue would be pretty good too, For but the but the Rogue decks just really? generally aren't, you know, like the top Rogue decks aren't. Yeah, there's only one, yeah. right? There, so. there was only one Rogue player in the tournament. It was Gyeong, right? And he yeah. he um committed to playing Quest Rogue. So then yeah. your archetype is limited to that. Like ten cards is not yeah. enough to change the archetype. So he was pretty limited in that regard. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a bummer. Uh, Mage might be pretty good. Mage could be workable, I think, with 10 extra cards. You could probably do some quest versus, like, some elements of quest. Like, th- so I was telling Gia, like, this this uh, tournament format was something I've been, I had been wanting to do for a long time. And I think the most compelling part to me was really um, seeing if the concept of having a 40-card deck type of meta was was something that that was possible you know instead of just like focusing just on like the most optimal 30 card and then just like teching from there you know just like putting oozes in or put you know like your standard type of uh uh, sideboarding Mm -hmm. um you know in other games could we actually look at it from the standpoint of of the versatility you know making up for not having like the optimal element you know the optimal version of a deck you know, the fact that you could have, like, not the most optimal, say, like, quest mage, but you could still, because you could, could morph it into, like, a, a regular elemental mage, that, mm-hmm. that makes it, you know, powerful, you know, in terms of, of, of a 40-card deck. So um, I don't think that's true, you know, after a lot of discussion. I don't think that that's really, that concept is, is, is you know, um, really what I was imagining it would be. But... Um, you know, I, I still wonder if it's possible, you know, to achieve that, like, 
like uh, uh, if there is some kind of format, you can achieve that. Um, I mean, I think that's a really good idea because, mm -hmm. you know, this concept in Hearthstone of having the perfectly balanced meta where mm -hmm. all nine classes see the same, roughly the same amount of play, that's been a myth for the longest yeah. time. No meta has ever achieved that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's probably not reasonable to expect that um, anytime soon or it would take nerfs upon nerfs and tons of rotations. So right. until that point, if we want to see equal class representation, then having these types of tournaments is a really good thing. Yeah, it, it's really great too from the standpoint of it, it introduces the whole uh, concept of having somebody who's best in the class too. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that we're missing that. You know, it's one thing that um, right. I don't know. Something we, you should do is definitely right. similar to what Firebird did, did, like having bands instead. Like where you, certain cards yeah. where you know they are just bad for the meta. Mm -hmm. And that people cannot play those, like they were, like quest yeah. for a long period of time for tournaments, and then you just ban the rogue quest, and then people just have to play around it. You know, mm -hmm. you can't. Well, you know, bring one, these decks. One concept that I was like messing around with with just these Valley Town show matches like a year or two ago, just testing proof of concept was just banning cards, like from match to match. Uh, you know, like instead of you guys just banning decks, I mean, you guys actually get a chance to ban a couple cards too. You know, and obviously for logistically it's hard because you'd have to build decks, like figure out your decks like right then and there. But I, I feel like, you know, creating that kind of nuance, you know, makes a lot of the, the matchups fresh. You know, like there isn't this set meta, you know, like where everybody yeah. understands how it works and it's just, it's kind of boring to watch the gameplay, to be honest. Like it's not, it, there's not a lot of new things that happen, you know, and it's up to you, you know, like as a caster to make it interesting for us, you yeah. know, and stuff like that. So um, there's so many things you can do. There's so many more formats that, that we need to try. I, I think that oh. would create more of a dynamic element to the game. And I hope we do that soon. I wonder how balanced the, the, the nine classes would be before if you just ban legendaries, if you only can play commons, rares, and epics. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think it would be so that. So death knights are the are the big one, right? You ban yeah. all the death knights, so and OTK paladins weapons. immediately gone. Yeah, the weapons. So Q blocks dead as well. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. I mean, I, you know, that sort of thing is, is good Like if you just do it for a short period. Like a long period's the same, right? Like the, the meta will, will develop again, you know, people will figure out that meta and it'll, it'll become figured out again, you know, and it'll become stale. So it, it, if you're going, if you're talking like from tournament to tournament, and this kind of introduces like maybe uh, an HCT that has, let's just say like more of a majors type of feel and each of the majors has mm -hmm. a different format altogether, you know, and, and you have to try to win that format, right? And it's and it's not like this just set way of playing through the entire year. Um, you know, that would be really do you, cool. Do you I'd think that in long term mm -hmm. it would be the best thing if they because from a design standpoint that they've introduced some sort of draft format in, in Hearthstone? Like the CL yeah. format. Yeah. I mean I think draft would be great. I mean there's there's some more strategy involved. And you can create different scenarios. You know, that, that even just with bands that we have right now in HCT, it creates different lineup you know, matchups. But you can never... I've not seen a single card game that balanced, like, draft, right? But it's impossible, right? Like, mm -hmm. completely impossible. Yeah. Right from a standpoint, but it's still com a competitive format. Also, like, Magic, like, the longest mm -hmm. game. It's uh, not even where... just competitive format. That that stage of the game, even just in League of Legends and Dota and whatnot, that, that's, like, 15 minutes of entertainment. You know, like, just... Picking the it's heroes. It's also fun. It's, I mean, and the, and the analysts are like just going to town. I mean, they're just like, oh man, they picked that because of that. You know, it's like, it's totally interesting to. to yeah, really it brings see. a completely new also so. skill aspect and fun aspect to the game where mm -hmm. you learn like how to draft, you know? Yeah. That is missing in, in like constructive where you just basically net deck the best deck and then yeah. you know, mm -hmm. try yeah. to learn the deck. Totally. I think Having would be very evolving cool. formats really rewards people that, you know, are good at the game rather mm -hmm. than just very very practiced at certain things right uh, right and that's because still... you have to think on your feet you have to adapt and that's undervalued in hearthstone mm -hmm. you know, absolutely like, we still don't reward people who you know create these decks and you know just the whole deck building element and even the strategic element it, it's still right. very heavily on execution and um you know it'd be nice you know, to really say that the best Hearthstone player is a combination of the two, it'd be nice to be able to say that. Um, yeah. 
Okay. Well, anyways, let's uh, before we move on, let's. I want to uh, let you guys know that this episode of Value Time is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Those you're not familiar with Mint Mobile, it's this uh, uh, you know this awesome uh, mobile service that you can uh, sign up for now, and it's it's really for folks that don't like like these big wireless providers. You know, like these you know these big wireless providers like AT&T I mean they're all about like big contracts and big bills and big fees and AT&T even recently announced that they have like 800 million administrative fees that they're going to be increasing like across the board which is kind of crazy you know <laughs> so that means everybody's bills are going to go up um and you know what these kind of big companies they don't want you to know is that there are companies like Mint Mobile that um you know that allow you to be able to cut all this extra, you know, fat off, you know, in terms of, in terms of your bill and, uh, cut it all the way down to like $15 a month. So mint mobile, uh, is, is kind of changing the space that way, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, kind of, kind of making, you know, this big wireless business, you know, like, like, or making people realize that maybe what their offerings are just a bit wrong. So, um, you know, with $15 a month is what they're offering. $15 a month, dude, you'd save like over a thousand bucks a month or a year if you, if your mobile bill was something like that. And, you know, what they offer you too is that like you can choose between the two, five and, and 10 gigabit plan. And, um, you know, there's, there's no paying for extra data if you have an unlimited data type of plan. I know a lot of people end up paying extra because they don't even use all their data, but it comes with unlimited talk and text. And uh, if you're not satisfied, there's a seven day money back guarantee as well. And it's easy to switch over from your phone too. Like they send you a SIM card in the mail. There's instructions on how to, how to change over to it, like from any provider that you have right now. It's really, really simple. And all you have to do is go to mintmobile.com slash value town and sign up now. And you'll get, again, $15 uh, a month. You'll have the SIM card shipped to you for free. And uh, yeah, it's just like I, I've done it with one of the phones I have. And it's like super, super easy. So check it out and let them know. You know, you really appreciate them uh, sponsoring the show. And uh, it's it's going to be cheap, too. <laughs> they had this $20 uh, for three months over over the holidays, too, which is like six you know six what six dollars and sixty six cents a month which is insane too but um okay so let's move on to 2018 year in review so um it's been a been a, a very long year you know in terms of hearthstone and um I, I think that it's been an up and down year uh lots mm -hmm. of good things lots of not so good things and um you know it's, I, I figured it'd be good to, to kind of talk about it so uh, why don't we start with the good things? So, Gia, like, what what are some of the good things that you think happened in, in Hearthstone uh, in 2018? Mm, I really like the master system that they introduced. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, when they said 200 points, everybody was like, "No way, this is not going to work." Or maybe <laughs> at best, one person. And we actually ended up with two three star masters. And mm -hmm. I really think that the tour stop system also allowed for the best of the best players just stay in Honduras to show their consistency. And I think it lent a lot more credibility to the competitiveness of the game that you can see the same people rising to the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the storylines for sure. We were able to finally have HCT storylines because the same people were winning, you know, and we were able to see the same people finishing top four, top eight, and, um, you know, being able to get to the narrative of saying who might be the best player in the world right that second you know that was really really hard to do in the past and it was, it was right. so cool to see that and uh even just the, the events you know having it in all these different cities around the world um mm -hmm. you know allowed the players to travel to all these places and you know allowed us to even see some of these places to some extent depending on what b-rolls they had there you know, <laughs> right, right but uh yeah that was definitely really cool um gara how about you any big pluses in 2018? Uh, the, unfortunately, the, like unlike the the most recent announcement, the most I like mm -hmm. the esports announcement announcement for next year. And I like when was that? Was it in November? That was in yeah, that was like in November or maybe early yeah, December. So, it was like kind of around same yeah, time, kind of like two months ago. Mm -hmm. And also like the unannounced balance patch, which happened like a couple oh, of weeks yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah. That was like huge because. You know, I'm I've been playing the game since day one, and I'm playing with Druid and against Druid since day one. And <laughs> <laughs> like, like the big cards from Druid got ner all of them got nerfed. Innovate, Nourish, and Wild Growth, which are from the basic set, mm -hmm. and that really makes me wonder if they're gonna do you know a new basic set or classic set core set, which so many people have mentioned you know over the years 
as a suggestion to Blizzard because the game will always end up being a little bit stale because you know it's very outdated it feels like you know the, the the overall basic cards in the game or classic cards and they keep nerfing and changing so many of them as well mm -hmm. so that is definitely the best thing for me like those announcement and that they, they're willing to you know hire <laughs> new people people like Charky joining mm -hmm. um the the yeah. blizzard de development team that was like a definitely a big plus in my opinion and they they're you know trying to improve the game like i really i was skeptical for a long time that they're not willing to improve it and I, I, like they're making a lot of positive changes behind the scenes and also like mm -hmm. for the game with the expansions i'm very positive with all the free expansions of the power level that the, they didn't release any two crazy cards this year like overall like the yeah. power level compared to death knights i mean this is a positive thing right because we had free expansions this year and there were no cards comparable to the legendary weapons and to the DKs, which were just through the roof. Nothing can compare with them. And it was very obvious that, yeah, you have to print cards in the expansions that are from similar power level or stronger than these cards. But if you print cards that are like stronger than these cards and just where is the power level of Hearthstone going to go in the next yeah. couple of years? It's just going to be, you play one card and win the game. And we are, are already almost at the point where you play a card and win the game. That's how powerful Death Knights are in Legendary Realms. Oh, TK Paladin! <laughs> yeah, TK Paladin. Yeah, push the hero power a few times and, and win the game. And <laughs> I always, like many, many people ask me over the two years, what has to happen in Hearthstone that we bring it back to the good old days, how we like to call it. And I always said, you basically have to release three low power level expansions in a row to tone down the overall power level. Then a new year standard rotation happens three of the you know crazy expansions will rotate out three of the low power level expansions will stay in the game and then if the next expansion of next year which i'm very positive that they will do that because they did it this year with three expansions in a row if we have like a relatively low power level expansion that the game will feel very similar to the beginning like where you can experimentate with all sorts of different classes all sorts of different decks and it will be more fun to play the game and yeah. yeah, just overall, I think very good decision throughout. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit it, boring. It's yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's like a double-edged sword. You know, it, yeah. it's like right. one of these things where you have to invest these brutal times. I mean, let, let's just be honest; it, it's been pretty brutal of not having the metal brutal, yeah. meta change much. I mean, it was great when Witchwood kicked in because it, it was new. There, there, there was new elements to it, but then. You know, Boomsday, literally nothing. I mean, even Witchwood <laughs> had very little too, to be honest. Like Witchwood, Boomsday, and then you know, and and now even the most recent one, we were we're, we're talking about just you know, a slight bit of change, right? So this is all an investment for the payout, which is going to be that's, in 2019. That's so, why, honestly, I never believed they mm -hmm. could do that. Like throughout the year. Because it, the game will feel boring because so few cards will be playable from the expansions right. just because people will keep playing the old broken cards. Yeah. So I never really believed fully that they could do that ever. But they really showed that they did it. And I'm so excited for what is to come like this yeah. year. I think Long -term this investment. will be yeah. the best year of Hearthstone ever. Yeah, no, agreed. I, I think that, that uh, you know, long-term wise, they, they did make these tough decisions that, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, a lot of people are complaining all year long and, and quite honestly, sales even in Hearthstone suffered too because of it. But hopefully it's because of long-term gains, which, you know, we'll see in 2019. I mean, one thing that we did see this year was that we had deck diversity. I mean, we've never had yeah. like 25 to 30 decks actually viable in terms of climbing the ladder, you know, and, and significant uh, uh, diversity in terms of even the classes. So um, they achieved that, no question. Obviously, polarization was probably in the bad bucket, but having them even get to that point where we can talk about 25, 30 decks is, is an achievement in itself. And we never had that in the history you know, of Hearthstone. So uh, I think that was like a huge thing too. Um, uh, one, what, one good thing that the polarization at least had was that uh, players could be com um, consistent in tournament performance because mm -hmm. the polarization was is was always good in Hearthstone for tournament lineups. So it really showed that people could figure out very good lineups in certain matchups mm -hmm. and keep winning yeah. the same tournament. People like Hunter Race, people like just saying, just kept winning tournament after tournament. So at least that was yeah. a good thing. But the latter experience has suffered a lot from it. 
Yeah, I, like you said, event meta. I think I think everything about event, you know, meta and 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 all that business was unaffected by all this polarization stuff. It was it was just actually great. Uh, it was just purely ladder. Yeah, I would say the single player mode too. I think that was another another big big plus. You know, the Witchwood had had its. Uh, it's different than the the dungeon runs, obviously, but you know, I, I think the witch hunts were were pretty. What were they called? They were called witch hunts, right? Or witch? What were they called again? Monster hunts. Monster hunts. Witch hunts. I, yeah. I knew that didn't sound right. Yeah, <laughs> the monster right. hunts. Yeah, so the monster hunts were kind of fun. It was wasn't quite as like open ended rogue feeling of it. You know, there were mm -hmm. were like very specific things that you would build, and they would just kind of win with those. So a little bit of puzzle mixed with dungeon runs, and then we had the actual puzzles in the the Boomsday right. project, which was uh, you know something that that you know I know Reddit has has loved for a long time. Um, and then we're, we're back to basically dungeon runs with the, you know, this, this, uh, very unique version of it with the rumble runs. So, um, you know, I, I think that it's been the best single player. I think these have been, you know, like a string of some of the, or the best single player modes we've had. And I hope they keep continuing it. I hope they make, I wish they would just make some of these like perm, perm modes, right. you know, you know, like have an arcade or something. Yeah. 90% of this podcast so far has been about the esports scene, but there's yeah. a significant portion of Hearthstone players that really only are there um, to play ladder casually or to go for the PvE content. Like a lot of my friends who yeah. are curious about, you know, having seen me do this and that in esports and they don't know what the hell Hearthstone is, this is a great starting point for them to explain yeah. how the game is, especially because it's free. And I think it's a really, really good step in terms of trying to get newer player bases into the game. Yeah, yeah, totally. And there's just, nobody plays casual. You know, like the actual casual mode in the game. Right. Nobody yeah. actually does that, so. Just the complete quest, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even that, I don't even think people do. I think people probably play Tavern Brawlers, you know, some, something sure. along those lines, even complete those. So, um, yeah, I think, I think just having more of these modes just available to them at all times, you know, would be, be really, really cool. Um, see what else? Did the nerfs? You mentioned the nerfs too, Gar. I kind of have the nerfs down here. I think the nerfs were probably um, two of the most significant nerfs that we've seen, you know, in a long time. And this last one was just ones that have been long, you know, long time coming. We've been all requesting, you know, that these these ramp ones be be nerfed for a long time. So uh, I know they only did it twice this year, but given how much impact each one of them had. Um, you know, I, I hope they just decide to do more, those, you know, like... Those were the biggest, most impactful nerfs in the history of Hearthstone, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They okay. changed so yeah. many, de they affected so many decks, the mm -hmm. entire meta so much. Yeah, no, no nerf was comparable to that. Yeah, the one in the spring was, um, it, it was, which one was it? It was the one to Q block, right? Um, um... yeah. It oh, was... there was the mana worm nerf as well. <laughs> oh, the mana worm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mana worm nerf as well. That's a big mm -hmm. one. So um, I, I feel like the the nerfs had more of an impact than all the expansions. Than the expansions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's... So hopefully they, no, they learn from that. Yeah, they learn from that, and and uh, you know they try to integrate more of that into the the um, regular schedule. You know, in terms of releasing stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. anything else good that like I would say is was crazy awesome um no I mean there's a lot of tiny tiny things but I I, I can't really say I mean I mean we talked about it but the the WCOE was SOE yeah WSOE yeah WSOE yeah. was yeah. Yeah. I've, no it, it was mm -hmm. pretty pretty cool yeah I would say it that. was also like like very new right mm -hmm. yeah like we never had something like that and it was so well received mm -hmm. yeah and it was just good you know it's it, it's kind of like bringing back the old you know like different kind of tournaments i know yeah, it third was third party kind of tournaments you mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like we were really missing that in hearthstone for a long time yeah yeah i, I think that this year was a little bit better about third party tournaments than last year you know, like I didn't feel like there were many the previous year, so no. um, I mean, yeah, like in 2017, I didn't. I, I felt like it was yeah. very HCT centric, and you know, shut out a lot of different third party organiza organizations. So this year, I think it was a, a little bit better. It's it's hard to say because they they gave HCT events to a lot of these third party, you know, like DreamHacks and all this stuff too. Mm -hmm. So it, it was kind of a an interesting mix there. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think that I, I think the end of the year was a really big plus for mm-hmm. for Hearthstone. You know, like uh, it ended really really strong. Um, you know, I think Hearthstone. I think a lot of people appreciated Hearthstone more at the end after some of the other games came out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, won't name them particularly, but some of them didn't do as well as as a lot of people were expecting that they would do, and I think that it, it had a lot to do with the differences, uh, or their differences from Hearthstone, you know, and the ability to watch it, the ability to you know like easily understand, uh, you know, the accessibility of it and all that stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think that Hearthstone kind of got a, a boost that way. Um, yeah. Not no not not throwing shade at any of the other games, but it's just the rea- you know I think that's just the reality you know like the Hearthstone, I think Blizzard did a good job in designing Hearthstone you know and, and I think that you can't just make any any card game and have it succeed you know like there's little elements to Hearthstone or, or maybe even major elements to Hearthstone that makes it super successful for that yeah, reason from mm-hmm. every card game released from now on will just always be compared to Hearthstone and mm-hmm. for all of Hearthstone's failings in terms of like you know, feeling rewarding based on the amount of time or how skilled you are at the game. You can't deny that it's just super accessible. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I also wanted to add, like, one of my uh, 2018 highlights is that Hearthstone was actually included in the Asian Games this year. So that's actually, like, just one step below Olympics in Asia. Mm -hmm. And they're including esports, and Hearthstone was chosen as one of those. And they're looking at you know, including more esports in coming uh, sports events in the future. Mm-hmm. And didn't like Cinto and uh, Cinto, Frodan, and Frozen have that exhibition match for the Olympic Committee? Committee also. Oh, uh, I I don't know if that was I this year. I vaguely remember that. I, I don't know. It was this yeah. year. Was it this year? Okay, yeah. I vaguely or remember that. Year. Yeah, I keep saying this but, year as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twenty eighteen. <laughs> no, but that that is huge you know i think that's a huge mm-hmm. step for um you know esports generally speaking um yeah. you know like they from the standpoint of the ioc i know the ioc said that they weren't ready for it yet you know like uh, it was they he they made that statement sometime i think in the fall or late summer that you know esports wasn't they weren't quite ready to to bring in esports but it sounds like you mm-hmm. know from the asian scene standpoint like they are ready so you know mm-hmm. i think the more momentum there that that uh they have in a huge, you know, demographic like the Asian um, uh, region, then there would just be more pressure, you know, for the IOC to actually right. accept it, you know, as a uh, esports as as a real Olympic sport. So we're not that far away, you know. I, you know, lots of lots of esports, different games are making, you know, presentations to to the committee, and and um, I wouldn't be surprised in in the next five years, you know, we we end up getting whatever esport into the Olympics, which would be amazing if Hearthstone made the olympics that'd be that'd be pretty amazing <laughs> it'd be, it'd be Can you imagine? hard Andre to imagine i know but he's sitting on the yeah, no. standing on the podium wow that would be pretty amazing i actually see. i have an olympic medal for Hearthstone. it feels good man you have an olympic medal for us oh, if you could say that yeah 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 no no yeah. from from wca they gave us um actual oh. like olympic medals from the same material and everything at the yeah. first WC. that's awesome oh, that's cool. <laughs> it, it was so cool uh, yeah. dude every asian event it's so incomparable to any <laughs> western event like yeah. it's such a different experience it like mm-hmm. it's absolutely incomparable i think it's right. for every esports title as well it's not just hearthstone mm. it's like true. dota as well it's just so i really wish i don't know that it will I... be dissimilar in the western world but yeah. right I mean, I, I feel like we need more. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's like stronger, but definitely more country representation type of events because global games just isn't cutting it, guys. Like, I don't know how you guys yeah. feel about it, but I, I just don't even. I don't think it even is achieving any of that, and it's not even interesting to me, which is really bad because the concept of representing your country should be a very powerful one, and I, and it should be easily accessible too. That's like the biggest draw to it is that you automatically have these fans because they're like, you know, in these countries, right. They're going to support their country mates, but I don't get any of that when it comes to global games. So, um, you know, I, hopefully some other tournaments, you know, I, I think some other tournaments are already are doing a better job of it, you know, like, 
whether it's even just like EU versus China or you know, whatever, you know, just even just like a collective region versus each other is, is like doing better than I think even the individual countries. So if people could figure that out that more, then I think that would probably translate into some momentum, you know, as well in terms of like achieving this. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's surprising. D don't feel as much of it here. In, in HDG had, had like a decent viewership at least, or they made some crazy amount off of the cheers for Team yeah. USA. So right. there's that at least. But yeah. I agree with you in the sense that HDG doesn't necessarily draw the viewer in so much. And I think a mm -hmm. big part of it is that it's drawn out over so many weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you have EU versus CN, it's a couple days, tune in for here, you get the action right away and you get to the finals right away. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the format of HEG that a lot of people criticized that it wasn't very competitive and that also just detracted from it. But I like the idea and I hope that they keep innovating yep. on it. Although it seems like it might not necessarily continue this year because of the format changes. Yeah, it's okay if it doesn't. I mean, if we just need to kind of like start from square one again, then that's fine, right? Like it's it's better than just doing it for the sake of doing it, you know, like right. that just has what, it's, that's what it's felt like. And I, I just, mm -hmm. not a huge fan of that. Um, but okay, kind of getting to some of the, I guess the bad and ugly here. Um, you know, I think I mentioned polarization was one of them, you know, just in terms of, of ladder, but, uh, and, and the result of, of trying to invest into this year for, for hopefully what turns out to be something good in 2019, it's just the stagnancy. Like we just had the same meta for the entire year for the most part, uh, -huh. uh outside of the, the nerfs, you know, really switching things up, but the expansions had no impact on the meta at all. So yeah. that, that was pretty brutal, <laughs> like to say the least. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, let's see what else oh no tournament mode oh my gosh like them announcing <laughs> that there's no tournament mode i mean that that's obviously like oh fuck you. not not good that's not an good. f from me <laughs> yeah f that's exactly. a yikes from me <laughs> oh man that's just killer but i have a feeling it's just temporary though like there's no way that they don't think that tournament mode is a, an important thing like given all of our feedback to them. There's just no freaking way that they don't think that that, that should be a priority somewhere on and, the road. And given that the competitive format this year is online tournaments, it has <laughs> to happen. I, I mean, I, I hold out, but please. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. So that that's uh, that was probably the I could honestly that could be one of the biggest disappointments of 2018 is just that the fact that they they said that they're not working on it anymore. And I was just like, oh my god, that that that's a killer. Because that's the only thing that's missing right now. I mean, I mean, would you say, Gara, like, if Hearthstone had tournament mode, I mean, is there anything to complain about? <laughs> like, like seriously, you know, outside of maybe you know stagnant meta from time to time, but like, what else could we complain about? Like, from the the, the thing is, like, you have very high. At least I have. Ex most people have extremely high expectations from a company like Blizzard, mm -hmm. and you always expect these <coughs> crazy wow announcements. Like even like new game modes, new features. It's just because it's Blizzard, you know. Mm -hmm. They wow you as a as a gamer, and this is like what I felt like very frustrating and underwhelming. That you know, there's like none of these cool things that Blizzard has done with Firestone. This yeah, yes, we got the puzzle mode and and you know the dungeon runs and whatnot, but like you like tournament mode, you know, like draft mode whatever just cool things that you don't even expect you know because it's freaking blizzard and like at blizzcon you know there was no announcement crazy announcement yeah. in any of the titles pretty much yeah um, well, i'd say that diablo got a pretty crazy announcement. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to mention. immortals baby yeah <laughs> Yeah. I didn't get blown away. I mean, it hasn't been good news from, from Blizzard this year. I mean, we had the Heroes thing happen like a few weeks ago as well. Yeah. So um, just I mean, lots of... The, the craziest thing they have done for Hearthstone was the un unannounced balance. Nerfs. Yeah. yeah. Unannounced oh, nerfs, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of... Yeah. That's kind of sad if you, <laughs> you don't want to be too negative, but it's yeah. true. That's the craziest thing that happened. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of change in, in the team too. Like we had Brode and Young Woo and, you know, Hamilton, they all left, you know, started their own, you know, second dinner company. Um, you know, I think that losing Ben, I, I think most people would have, would say that, you know, you know, it was losing kind of the face of the team, you know, and, 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 uh, 
that was the negative. I don't know if it's actually a negative in the end, to be honest. Like, I think that getting some new um, blood into the, the team could potentially be good. And we talked about, like, Chalky being hired. And, you know, at this point, you know, I feel like we're, we've got more people who are, you know, kind of one of us, you know, like people who, who were, were uh, uh, professional players and, and people kind of had the same sentiments in terms of, you know, what, what the game needed. And mm -hmm. I think we're starting to see it. You know, like, I think some of this is still Ben's, you know, like, like Broad's uh, fingerprint, but we're starting to see less of it. I think maybe the next expansion, he won't, he wouldn't have had anything to do with. So, um, potentially, it could be maybe one more after that. But, um, but you know, like, I, I think the way that it's moving, if 2019 ends, it does end up being super good, then, you know, maybe just this, the new, you know, this, this new influx of people uh, you know, might have affected things. So, um, I think that, you know, could be good or bad hard to say but definitely losing ben brode i think even from the standpoint of blizzard itself is is a, a minus you know overall having some big personalities like who yeah. who does introductions at, at outside of jeff kaplan now right is there any big blizzard personality you know like part of the the blizzard team that's like that notable i mean mike morheim's gone now too so like who Okay. When they do the expansion announcements, they tend to invite like non Blizzard affiliated people now. Yeah, uh, like like you mean like actors and stuff. Oh, you know, you know oh, well, oh, you mean like well, like, I meant like famous. for they get day nine. I mean, he's yes, not directly right. under, um, right, the, right, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But the fact that they don't have that in house um, type of magnetic personality yeah. or in house viewership draw is probably not the greatest, but you know, it's too early to say whether Ren Broad's leaving is that big of an impact on the game itself. Yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that that was a, you know, another uh, obviously thing that happened this year. Um, anything else really that was like- On the bad? Yeah. I mean... um, well, I have to address something. As somebody that was casting All Star Invitational, there was a okay. big controversy about it, of course, because Roger and Shaxi were invited. Oh, and yes. We saw the cheating a lot of the competitive yeah. community um, say that they were boycotting the events or that mm -hmm. just com always spamming every tweet from HS Esports about it. And I think it's totally fair that people, I mean, people are allowed to express those opinions. But yeah, yeah I'm not sure if Blizzard's been doing enough to uh rather punish or properly sanction people who have been caught cheating or win trading yeah yeah i i agree with that too i mean i in the end you know i think a lot of people make the statement that uh, the event organizers can do whatever they want to do and that's true they can do whatever they want to do and i think the timing of it might have been uh, you know, like when they first like made the invites and when, when, you know, I think maybe some of the cheating was, was, uh, you know, really revealed and, and proven. I forget if that, if that, if there was even some kind of timing element to that, like they were invited first. Um, but to your point, you know, it, it doesn't look good like it, for, for any event to have people who are, uh, confirmed as cheaters, you know, to be. Uh, a participant in it, especially something like All Stars. Like All Stars is a, a pretty major <coughs> thing. Only certain people get invited for specific reasons. You know, being notable that year. You know, in terms of your performance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, something that's kind of prestigious in that way. Yeah, having these these people with with uh, proven faults like is is not smart <laughs> on their end. Right. Um, yeah. But I think that was the um, only. I mean, obviously the cheating happened at HUG, so that that happened, you know, that that obviously impacted that event as well. But mm -hmm. uh, was that the only thing that happened this year in terms of of that, like questionable event organizing, <laughs> basically? Um, there was a playoffs where there was this match between Sako and Ox and Akumaker where they had oh, to do right. a regame yeah, because of audio. some yeah yeah somebody accused the other side of maybe having heard audio yeah. and. I think that both parties had good intentions, but some miscommunication down the pipeline and whoever was the admin there did not vet properly. Right. And so they, they just wanted to make a decision to have the broadcast go on smoothly. And yeah. I think that was really unfortunate for both Aku Maker and Sequinox because now Aku is like consistently accused of being a cheater when he's not. And then Sequinox, yeah. of course, 
lost like he had to regame a game that he already won and that's really that sucked yeah no that can be tough too like whenever you, you get a reputation like that i mean already you went through that too like early in hearthstone right like the whole high mom thing or whatever and um mm -hmm. it takes a while you know to kind of be able to work out <coughs> of that that stigma so um yeah that can be that can be tough I'm not too worried about Aku though. Aku's so good at the game, so sure. it'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, it is pretty rough for Psychonox. Um, um, yeah, I think outside of that, it's not too much. Maybe what are we looking for in 2019? Except for the, uh, um, you know, obviously the reset, which I think will be impactful. But anything else you guys, you know, very very hopeful for or, or looking forward to seeing in 2019? Worlds. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Much. Worlds. Uh, I think Worlds could get a lot of viewers uh, this year, given who's mm -hmm. going to be there. You know, I, I think, oh, uh, yeah, I think that could be really cool. I think something that they should do, which would be really cool, is something they're doing with the Wild uh, format this month. Um, you know, where they have the $30,000 tournament for top 100 Legend players. They should do that for Standard now. So, like, instead of yeah. getting points for... Uh, Worlds for, for, next yeah. year, right, right. Just make like tournaments, right? How cool would that be? Like, so Leda is still relevant, and you can qualify every month for like individual big prize pool tournaments. I think that would spice up the game a lot. Yeah, and it would be awesome. I'd be down for that. Yeah, I'd definitely watch so those. Super high appeal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it'd be really good too that they have those two separate tournament circuits because that's Blizzard recognizing that. The skills it takes to excel in ladder are not necessarily the same skills it takes to excel in tournaments, and you can reward both of them because both take mm -hmm. hard work. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and the next expansion is going to be, I think, well, that the, is the like reset the expansion. Plus expansion. Yeah, I'm looking for like definitely more than <laughs> to any expansion this year, or like last year. Yeah, because you didn't re because of how the they began the trend, like. You know, with the low power level, you kind of like from the Rastakan expansion. I really didn't expect too much at all, mm -hmm. just because of the two expansions before that. But I'm really looking forward to the next expansion. I didn't have that like right. for a long time. Where I'm really looking forward to an expansion. Obviously, mm -hmm. also the rotation is gonna be crazy. Uh, today, some people suggested to make like a Jaina petition that she stays in standard. That would be what? man. It's like, I can't what? miss page without Jaina. Come on, like, that just doesn't make sense. Like I she mean, was like. The then coolest. you're gonna say Rex are too. I mean, like all these no, people are gonna no, say no, different things. No, 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 not Rex. Rex are the most problematic. I know, I know, but or Goldan or whatever. You know, like no. people are gonna say. <laughs> different. Jane is different. Okay. Okay. She's different. <laughs> she's special. She's, she's special. such an important part of the class right now. <laughs> Without okay. Jaina, you can throw away Mage Plus. I don't know. Dude, it's really <laughs> bad after the rotation, dude. Oh, like, man. I don't know, man. Like, yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah, like, what I, route do you want to go? I say start over. <laughs> like, let's just get rid of them all. You know, and, and they can add one at a time, you know, like fine, in expansions. Like a but we still have, like, stuff. Dr. Boom and, and Stupid Hagata. Yeah, That's, like, the only thing that bothers me a little not bit. not that bad. Come on. Is Hagatha really that bad? Hagatha is not that bad. Like, if like, there's... Well, in terms oh, of design space, right, Hagatha allows for more value generation, whereas, let's say, Zul'jin, it's just, like, one big go, and then it's just a upgraded hero power so i think agatha is a bit more problematic in that sense so also, it's Doctor, but it's course. limited though you know like you, you, with agatha i mean not to mention like mm -hmm. every spell you get you could just draw a you know like like one that's completely worthless but mm -hmm. you know i i don't i've never really felt like the the draws from agatha were just consistent for one thing and then secondly just just crazy oppressive you know like you still have to get you know minions and you know, you have to build your deck a certain way too. You know, in terms of doing that, but uh, I don't know. I've just never had that much problem with Hagatha. though. And... Of course not, because you played other super powerful cards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Played out. I, I think uh, in a world without DKs, yeah, uh, yes. like Hagatha, Doctor Boom will feel super strong. Doctor Boom, will feel I like... can understand. Yeah. Doctor Boom for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, Hagatha. Mm -hmm. Like you have to imagine, like Hagatha in a 2014 Hearthstone meta. Right. Busted. Like, yeah, because you play this value game 
-hmm. but nobody has like crazy value cards don't exist mm -hmm. anymore and then you have like a dk any dk is gonna be yeah, yeah that's like the little bit more <laughs> something know. but I, but I, like I, you mentioned though compared to other dks they're definitely much better. forget the other dk i'm just like i mean i just think there there's an actual miss in, in hagatha you know like the actual card you draw isn't necessarily useful at all where so you know the percent success rate in, in, in drawing from Agatha is probably like, you know, maybe 66% or something like that. And which is I still mean, good. It's still great. Yeah. But it's still not the a fact, hit, you know, like every the time. fact that you can generate value is insane. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. It doesn't so really matter what you get. It's only one in how many hero powers to get the build a mech. It's still insane. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you get to do it once every three, well, four turns. Yeah. I mean with with Boomsday, like you can make or sorry, with Doctor Boom, you can make you can make an argument that Every hero power is is useful, like in, in some ways, Ex except yep. for if they have no minions yep. on the board, right? Like, but for the most part, you can benefit to some extent every time that happens. So but you really different. have to yeah. imagine I mean, that you guys are probably right. I'm just like the, the, the way how you fight these. <laughs> I just DKs like right now is with things. your own DK, but you yeah, won't yeah. have your own DK. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. All DK should be but, gone. Well, well, you know they're going to keep making them, like each expansion. Really? Like, they're going to keep making heroes. I think for different classes, each expansion. I feel like they're just, you know, they're 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 moderate. You know, it's going to be more moderate. Obviously, none of them are going to be as powerful as any of the DKs were. But, I'm, I'm um, very curious. Like, yeah. right now, I can't say how good it will be. You know, it's just uh, like, like Zuljin. I mean, Zuljin is a perfect example. Like, I, I think. It was pretty well designed, you know, like it, it doesn't just finish you, you know, because of the randomness of the targeting and then, but it does give you value. Like it fills the board a lot of time. I mean, almost every time it fills the board. Right. So, okay, so yeah. I, I put Zildjian in a different category from all of these other heroes, right? Because it's like a one-time big effect. It feels mm -hmm. like Yogg or Nazoth, yeah. right? Then one flame strike clears all of that, yeah. right? And then yeah. the last thing value you get you get is from the hero power, which is like the same as upgraded nature hero power. Or steam weedle, not yeah, that exactly. insane, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas Doctor Boom and Hagatha are ongoing effects that you cannot clear. One flame strike does not solve randomly generated spells, and even though it's not always hitting the good spells or good value, it's value, and so yeah. that limits design space. I think. Well, I mean, if it only on average gave you like seven, let's just say, let's just say on average it gave you seven spells, right? It's kind of similar to Zildjian that it fills the board, you know, in a way. It's just something happens all at once and it can be dealt with all at once versus this kind of like, you know, drip, dr you know, dripping kind of value, you know, that, that could be good. But the thing is, is Hagatha can get you more than seven, you know, like in, in some, it yeah. can get you more than seven if, if, if uh, you get it early enough and that sort of thing, but um no question that the heroes will have you know like with the power level reduced by a lot the the new heroes will will be pretty powerful relative wise but mm -hmm. um but you know it's still not on the level of any of the dks which the dks were just um, they're crazy <laughs> like crazy uh, in, in terms of of the amount of value you get like literally never ending with rexar and mm -hmm. so um uh, I, th I think it'll be better. Like it, it, you have to continue to rise, right? Like they, they're going to the reset the whole thing, and then it's going to start over this process, you know, of of trying to um, you know power level going up and, and ha I giving think them they some were, space. Like experimenting a lot with power level per mana cost. Yeah, and I think they nailed it way more with the most recent DKs than the first DKs. Mm -hmm. I think the first DKs were just way too strong. No, Furion at seven, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like all know, the right? first DKs were just no, way too Furion is disgusting, yeah. yeah. But, like, but yeah. like, if you compare them to the the three most recent DKs that stay in the game, they're so much weaker in comparison, but they're still strong, super powerful, more than average cards. But they're not like, okay, I play this card and just win. Like, Hagata will not win you the game by just having a Hagata. But there's DKs like Gul'dan that win the game by themselves or Jaina or yeah. any of the other DKs. And Zul'jin, I think it's one of the cards that really shows, it really feels like a 10 mana card. Yeah, you like, know, like I think 10 mana said. cards should be extremely powerful, but not like, okay, mm -hmm. I win the game. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure about that yet. Like if 10 mana cards should be just winning you the game in Hearthstone, if that is a good thing or a bad thing. So, so the game like faster. No, but it's difficult to get to 10 mana, you know? It's like the game, you know, you play the game and then you play a 10 mana card that like almost wins you the game. 
And Zuljin is definitely super, super powerful. I don't think he's too strong. Like, obviously, he's extremely powerful. Like, right now, he's good because he also replaces the Rexa hero power, so you stop getting infinite value. So that's super, super good right now for Zuljin, but he's definitely extremely strong. But I like the, the power level for a 10 mana card Zuljin represents. Yeah. And I think... So crazy stuff, you know, it keeps the game interesting. Like crazy yeah. stuff is set all over the place. You know, like the value is limited. That then that that's the biggest exactly. thing. You know, and that's the big thing. Yeah. So yeah. So anyways, looking forward to that. Looking forward to see what the expansions come and if they they develop out some of these you know mech type of uh, synergies and you know just no more like sets. rush synergies. You know, some of the stuff <laughs> that they haven't really really done yet. No more kill set too. I mean, we haven't even talked about the non DK stuff that disappears as well. Oof. I mean, we lose. You know, we lose uh, uh, what Lyra. We lose uh, uh, all of the, the minority. Get oh, out of my yeah. life! I can't wait. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> uh, Paladin. We lose. Uh, what should I call it? The I mean, shoot. God, I'm not like, I'm totally brain fart. Like Mo Taran. Tar Taran. No. no uh, Taran. Uh, Spike Roots. Which which wait which ones now? Um, I mean, we lose like like the most powerful cards in in. I'm pretty sure we lose Tarim. Wasn't that? Yeah, Tarim. Yeah, we definitely lose Tarim. I mean, that, that's like one of the most powerful cards in. Paladin, a bunch so. of priest resurrect cards and and, and yeah, whatever. like eternal servitude and, I mean, yeah, <laughs> this is a major major ones, vine cleaver. Yeah, so, I mean, we're talking about nerfing every single top deck like all across yes, the board. Like the power level will yeah. be so much lower. No devil sort egg. No, no play dead. I believe is play no dead. No cube. Even? Yeah, no cube. I no mean, cube. Oh my crazy. god! Crazy. I mean, we're talking about like <laughs> vanilla Hearthstone. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like all the DKs <laughs> and the most recent and the most free recent expansions are like yeah. TGT power level kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I it's, don't know if it's, it's really that bad. bad. Uh, that's pretty bad. Like, it's but... very low power level. Yeah, like okay, we have like what? What are the, well, the rush? Teams? Rush is probably the most powerful thing, right? Like so, we have rush, uh, mm -hmm. overkill, and what was the third from the free expansions ago? Which echo? Was... Uh, echo, yeah. Uh, we yeah, have yeah, echo, go. overkill, and rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only rush is good there. Yeah, yeah, that only is, rush that is, is good there. Literally vanilla vow almost vanilla Hearthstone. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So excited for that. Um, okay, well, anyways, why don't we move on to some Q&A. Before we do, I just want to give a shout-out to some of the patrons that support Value Town, and you, the, you are the folks that are, you know provide the, you know, like, foundational, you know, type of support for the show and allow us to do it. So always want to spend some time and give a shout out to our, our uh, folks that participate on the patreon.com slash value town. And that's Mike T, our legendary producer, as always. And uh, Ray Dan, Bryce L, Cameron M, Paul H, Vincent G, Dan S, Scott L, Grant A, David H, David F, Andrew C, William R, and Davisaurus, just to name a few. Um, you guys are amazing, and if you do enjoy the show and you want to uh, throw a pledge our way, you can do that at uh, patreon.com, patreon which you can see at the top there. So um, really appreciate you guys, as always. But Q&A, we got a question from Ahmad N. He says, with a nerf to a key card in Odd Paladin, it still maintains its high win rate as a Tier 1 deck. Um, I guess, is this... Is this a bad thing? I guess I'm trying to figure out what the question. And maybe I cut off the question here, but um, like, are, are are we feeling like Odd Paladin still like or still needs another nerf? No, absolutely not. Mm, yeah, me either. Like, I was kind of saying that earlier. Yeah, it's just like I don't really have a problem. Too with many cards Paladin. could nerf from the deck. It's just yeah. it's you play like Frostwolf Warlord. What is it? <laughs> As the, yeah. like. No, you don't play Warlords, do you? Is is that what? Yes, that's what people are? used to is replace people, level up. Yeah, people yeah, are yeah. actually playing that card right yeah, now. Yeah, that's the key oh win God. condition card of the day. Are you serious? I didn't it's, so it's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad. Man, have I like, man, I've never come across that. What the heck? You think other people are, uh, like? Holy uh, crap! You're right. Oh my God, that's the deck is just a Bible. I, I never see okay. it. Like it's <laughs> the deck is just a Bible. <laughs> yeah, the deck is a walking Bible thumb. Yeah. I mean, it's still really powerful, right? Because like the whole thing about level up is that if you don't clear their board, they threaten a huge board. Now, if you don't clear it on turn five, they threaten one single minion, which mm -hmm. is still uh, like oppressive to certain decks. But like now, at least you have a single silenceable target or just something yeah. that can be removed with a single spell. Whereas like level up, very few classes have the AOE to deal with level up by turn five. Yeah. So. 
I think it's much fairer. And I think it's, it's like Odd Paladin is still like fine to have in the meta. Otherwise, Odd Rogue would be really unhealthy, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's, it's just, just, but complaining about it being too strong after good nerf like 12 times. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what do you want, man? It's like, he plays like basic <laughs> cards, dude. It's like, we want yeah. to eliminate like it forever. Play, right? man. I know, it is. <laughs> Which uh, it's good to have this type of deck that's you know relevant yeah. in, in the top of the meta too. Like there has like, to be even something. Like even Creeper is not. Look at this deck. How much it goes there. <laughs> and this is like the original. It's almost, <laughs> this looks like the original. Auto odd Paladin. Arms like, level up Corridor Creeper. Yeah. Like, Outside of the Frost on. Lords, this is the original, and and maybe the yeah, defenders yeah. too. The Neo Divine so. Favor as well, which is super annoying. But yeah, way. yeah. So yeah, I don't doesn't need anything. <laughs> um, yeah. Any like, other questions? You can beat this deck with any class if you want to. Yeah. Um, if you guys have any questions too in Twitch chat, definitely um, you know be sure to type it in there. We'll we'll ask uh, any of that for any of the viewers that right now. Uh, Ahmed actually had another question, which are, are nerfs to Wild Growth Nurse and Aviana too much for Wild Druids? And in hindsight, can we revert Aviana with Wild Growth and Nurse nerfed? Ooh. Um, okay, I'm gonna sit out of this one. I played zero Wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, we've yeah. all played very limited Wild, but I I don't think that. Nourish. I mean, I don't think wild growth and nurse were like the was the root of the issue with Aviana, right? Like, I, I mean, was, isn't UI a bigger, not UI, but um, well, maybe it is. Coon? Uh, yeah, Coon. Coon, I felt like was was a bigger problem, right? Given that you could just re reset your your mana crystals. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I don't. I don't know. I I think Aviana being nerfed just needs to be. I mean, way. looking at the wild <laughs> meta snapshots, like the the strongest druid deck is like a tier three druid deck, which is token druid. So yeah. druid definitely seems a it's little. It's not Starliner, bit... dude. I'm like disappointed, man. <laughs> Starliner druid had its moment for a little bit in, in wild, but I guess not anymore. Um... Druid is Bible Tub now, which is cool. <laughs> It's about time. Another it's walking Bible. Bible. Thump. I know. We, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's the last time it was Bible thump. Like it's never. like Orange playing like, a specialist. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> playing through it in a special tournament. Yeah, I'm trying to look. Where is it? What's the highest druid right now? It's it's like forty seven percent win rate. Oh my god, really? That's so sad. That, yeah, that's Bible thump. Like I said, it's. <laughs> I've never seen. Did we actually ever had like such a bad class? Yeah, we did, like where the highest win rate is like 40, 40 there something. Was priest two years ago was really awful. Oh I think. gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah priest but was really bad. The best deck yeah. being below fifty percent. Yeah. I can't remember. Oh, priest for sure was in that range. Yeah, there's no question. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so bad. Like if you think about it, the best I, deck is like man, 47%. I, I, I don't think that's right though. I, I still think Druid can you can still build something viable with Druid without the ramp. I just don't think people have done, you know, enough with it. No. You know, they tried um, you know, the the um Spiteful Summoner type of thing, like like you know, knee jerk, you know, at like WSOE and, and things like that. But I don't know. I, is yeah. is it's Token crazy Druid to really think about, that right? bad? Because Druid had like six tier one decks. And Vicar from two to three mana is like the big thing, but it's still like playable, of course. And you could technically even put Kalasev now in Druid. The main reason to not play Kalasev in Druid was Vigrove, but yeah. now you could play Vigrove for free mana. That it went from like six tier one decks to yeah, absolutely not play. That's that's actually. I don't know. Kind of I, I just feel like Egg Druid or Token Druid. You know, like some of the Druids that didn't even use the ramp before should still be decent. You know, like right what now. token you would use this ramp? It's super core. I know, to token token does, but there was a time where like Eggdru didn't. So I, I remember because Jackie mm -hmm. played this, you know, the show this this banning card thing with me one time, and it was against uh, I think it was against Orange, and Orange banned um, uh, Innervate. You know, and some like some of these <laughs> ramp cards, oh, yeah, and yeah, he yeah. didn't even he doesn't even run any of the ramp cards in his, his egg druid. So it was hilarious because he totally banned cards that weren't even being used, like in in uh, Jackie's deck. So uh, that's why it was so funny. But I don't know. I just feel like there's druid has so many tools that it surprises me that that somebody hasn't come up with something to um you know even just break the fifty fifty mark. You know, like. Uh, but I guess not. I guess people dog are... probably because dog is playing through it all day every day. Is he? He'll come up with something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. If he is, then yeah, dog. I mean, I I trust dog to come up with. He's something. climbing to let him move through it. 
There you go. Hakkar Druid, See? guys. Hakkar Druid, Hakkar is, Druid is the way to go. You only oh you use God. wild growth, but you don't need nourish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dogs playing Hakkar. See, chat knows. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's not for memes either. Chat is is it is it for for real? Actually, let me just look. The deck is actually okay. I think let me see where it needs optimization. Oh my but it's god! Okay. Look at this. Okay, the highest thing we see is spiteful. Look at this. Look at this. I'm looking at HS replay, by the way, guys. Uh, Ooh, let's check out the spiteful list. I wonder, like, yeah, most likely people net deck WSOE because that we were the first ones playing it. <laughs> oh, there's some good ones here. Like, I, you know, I don't have access to the database anymore. But I used to like just yeah. check out what the the you know the best ones were like. Like are, are they playing a uh, strong shell scavenger? Because that's the MVP in the deck for cost. Strong shell scavenger, not this one. This is like an old like. Okay, one. boo. Let me, let me see. Let me see. Let me maybe. Let me the latest one is forty-eight point four percent. Strong shell? No, I don't see it. I see Lodi. For cost. Okay, Lod Lodi should be there, but yeah. There's okay, a lot. I don't get behind any of these if they're yeah. not playing <laughs> strong shell. <laughs> yeah. No, strong shell is really good. So I I, I understand that. No, I don't see any of these. Yeah, it's crazy. None of these have anything. Wait, what is? Oh, this is legend. Let, let me just do legend only. Maybe you know. Oh, no, no, no one's thing... playing spiteful druid and legend. Yeah. There's no, no way. Sure. Right? The druid, thing is, yeah. another thing that is certainly not helping druid is that hunter is the strongest. Yeah, <laughs> class. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a terrible matchup for druid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess I guess there's just nothing there. I mean, this is this is what we see in HS replay, which is like not a fifty percent anywhere. So. <laughs> That uh, is nuts. Actually, is there... Okay, let's see this. No, not in Legend. Man, it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> like, maybe last day? Okay, F for oh. Druid. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is sad. This is real sad. Crazy, uh -huh. man. Okay, well, I guess uh, Druid's going to have to wait <laughs> another three months to get something. We'll have to see. I might play around with Druid this week, then. It's been it's great for three years. It can definitely wait for three months. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. agreed, agreed. Okay, well, it doesn't look like anybody else has any questions. So, uh, you know, definitely, I guess, save them for next week. But um, why don't we wrap up? It's been uh, almost two hours here. Gia, first time on the show. It was definitely great getting a chance to, you know, talk about the events and, you know, recapping 2018. But um, thanks again for staying up because it's, it's like 6 o'clock over there, guys, like where she is in the morning. So mm -hmm. she stayed up all night. But uh, any shout-outs you want to do before we take off? Um. I guess shout out to ESP Gaming, most of all, because WSOE was a big talking point in today's podcast. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people want to see more of it in the future. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I didn't stay up that long. I just had a short sleep, but oh, I can okay. definitely go back to sleep. So don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's all good. It's it's hard hard to figure out like all this uh, time zone stuff when when uh, people are around the world. That's that's Hearthstone for you. Global. Our community is global, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Gara, how about you? Any shout outs? Shout outs to my stream. I'm back to streaming Hearthstone every day for what? like two weeks. People is still sure? come and ask. It's like the biggest meme what? is you're playing yeah. Artifact all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really every day Hearthstone Twitch tweets like Gara Shaman. Best Hearthstone stream on Twitch. Uh, most Wait, Gara, your, your name is Gara Best Shaman, right? So when are we going to see you on the next Specialist Showdown? Oh, <laughs> this is a sore it. point, Gia. This is a real <laughs> sore too point. Soon. Too soon. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. I was like, please, pick me. Pick me. Oh, oh, my Sorry, goodness. I didn't know. Oh, that's like, not good. Please. That's not good. <laughs> I, didn't get, I didn't make it. Uh, that, uh, Peter, you know, Peter qualifies as a Specialist. Even though he made, he branded himself it. that. <laughs> I was benched. Next time. I was benched. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. to try harder. I need more wins. <laughs> like playing Aston every single day for five years wasn't enough to make it. Oh, man. <laughs> you need to make, oh, you need to make Gara Shaman and make it overtake Ike Shaman. Then you oh, can get man, I need to pick exactly. a class that, you know, had the least popularity and then maybe I put all Gara my... Gara Best Druid. <laughs> Druid, let's go! <laughs> you mean, Nobody wants it. Like, seriously, hey. seriously. That's fun. <laughs> what? Orange is too busy. Okay, let's go. That's yeah. That's gonna be your best bet. That's for sure. <laughs> no, yeah, but it's super fun to do Valley Town again. So shout out to you, Chen. Yeah. No problem. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to 2019. It's gonna be great.
Yeah, 2019, will, I think, will be awesome. But I'll round things out. Just thanking uh, to you guys for doing the show, all of you guys for uh, watching, and uh, everybody, you know, for, uh, you know, obviously coming back and watching the show 2019. So, you know, we got a great year ahead of us and lots more episodes, uh, you know, up ahead. So, uh, you know, definitely tune in to, for the latest. And if you can follow the show at uh, Value Town GG just for any you know announcements or just to know who's going to be on next week and all that good stuff. Again, you can support us at patreon.com slash valuetown. And you can find all the audios on uh, all the big audio channels. So iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spotify, and soundcloud.com slash champmv. So uh, that's going to be it, guys, for this week. So for Gia, Gara, and myself, champmv, we'll see you next week.